A reading from the second book of Samuel. An informant came to David with the report. The children of Israel have transferred their loyalty to Absalom. At this, David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, Up, let us take flight, or none of us will escape from Absalom. Leave quickly, lest he hurry and overtake us. Then visit disaster upon us and put the city to the sword. As David went up the Mount of Olives, he wept without ceasing. His head was covered, and he was walking barefoot. All those who were with him also had their heads covered and were weeping as they went. As David was approaching Baharim, a man named Shimei, the son of Gera, of the same clan as Saul's family, was coming out of the place, cursing as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the king's officers, even though all the soldiers, including the royal guard, were on David's right and on his left. Shimei was saying as he cursed, Away, away, you murderous and wicked man. The Lord has requited you for all the bloodshed in the family of Saul, in whose stead you became king. And the Lord has given over the kingdom to your son Absalom. And now you suffer ruin because you are a murderer. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, please, and lop off his head. But the king replied, What business is it of mine or of yours, sons of Zeruiah, that he curses? Suppose the Lord has told him to curse David. Who then will dare to say, Why are you doing this? Then the king said to Abishai and to all his servants, If my own son, who came forth from my loins, is, is seeking my life, how much more might this Benjam Benjaminite do so? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. Perhaps the Lord will look upon my affliction and make it up to me with benefits for the curses he is uttering this day. David and his men continued on the road, while Shimei kept abreast of them on the hillside, all the while cursing and throwing stones and dirt as he went. The word of the Lord. Lord, rise up and save me. O oh Lord, how many are my adversaries? Many rise up against me. Many are saying of me, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are my shield. My glory, you lift up my head. When I call out to the Lord, he answers me from his holy mountain. When I lie down and sleep, I wake, up, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I fear not the myriads of people arrayed against me on every side. Dominus vobiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcum, Glory 
Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs, who had an unclean spirit, met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, and even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the, the countryside. The people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion sitting there clothed in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As, as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. Verbum Domini. The main point of the gospel on Sunday is that the Lord Jesus Christ has the authority to cast out evil. And he has the authority over the dominion and reign of Satan, his kingdom. Because Jesus Christ is the kingdom of God. He is the kingdom in person come in the flesh. He has come to set those free from captivity and those in bondage. The Alleluia verse from yesterday was, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in the land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Many people think that evil is more powerful than good. This is far from the truth. Far from the truth. 
The authority of the Lord Jesus cuts the shackles of the evil one and frees those under the dominion of evil. The gospel account of the Gerasene demoniac, which is written in all three synoptic gospels, today St. Mark and St. Luke and St. Matthew, the other synoptic gospel writers, are the same account, the same account of the liberation of evil and sending forth evil into swine. St. Mark chooses to focus on one particular man who was possessed, where St. Luke and St. Matthew give the narrative of two demoniacs who were possessed. Both accounts of these demoniacs encountering God the Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, is striking and reassuring to us of the power and authority that the Lord has to cast out evil, perhaps in our own lives, and to heal and to bring restoration. It says that the demoniacs met Jesus and coming out of the tombs so fierce that no one could pass by. They were larger than life, you might say. The way they were acting, not letting anyone pass by on the roadway. First, the scriptures make a distinction between the two men and the demons who possessed these men. Second, the text says that coming out of the tombs, we might picture this in our mind's eye what tombs might look like, cut hone out of rock. The Gospels of St. Luke and St. Mark address this same encounter with Jesus and describe this demonic force as legion. That's not simply two demons. But legion was used to describe a force of 6,000 strong. The account shows the sovereignty that Jesus has, the God-man, over the forces of destruction and evil. And what was taking place in this man's life? Jesus came to set this man free. It's interesting to compare and contrast the facts that Matthew, Mark, and Luke give us concerning this account. St. Matthew simply says, coming out of the tombs. But St. Luke says he lived not in a house, but among tombs. Normal people don't live in tombs. Dead people live in tombs. They're not alive anymore. People that are alive live in houses. But this man who was possessed lived in a tomb. And in this case, these two men were experiencing spiritual sickness and even spiritual death. Separation from God, the worst kind of death. They were living in tombs cut out of rock, but the real tombs that they were in were the shackles of the evil one the worst kind of slavery. Their possession was their tomb. Today's gospel account from St. Mark gives greater details of the demoniac being bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. He would even cry out night and day and bruise himself with stones. These are real things that happen when people are possessed by the evil one. Even they can't control what is happening within them. And we need to pray 
and even fast for those who are experiencing spiritual affliction. If you read the scriptures closely in Matthew's account, it was not the two men who cried out. That is, the two men in themselves, who they were. It says, what have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? It was Legion who was possessing the two men who confronted the Son of God. How do we know this? The scripture says, and the demons begged him. They had taken over the two men. The demons were begging. One command of the Lord Jesus shows us that his compassion and his mercy, and he simply says, go. And the demons came out of the two men, and they entered the swine and caused the swine to rush into the deep bank of the sea and perish in the waters. This account is very reassuring and very consoling just, again, of the power and the authority that the Lord Jesus has. And that he wishes to set the captives free and bring light into darkness. That Jesus had pity on these men. What is profoundly sad in this gospel account is the whole city came out to meet the Lord Jesus because no one had ever d demonstrated such authority and power over evil as the Lord Jesus, and they immediately asked him to leave. They asked him to leave after demonstrating such power and authority over evil. And they not just asked him, but the scriptures say what? They begged him to leave their neighborhood. Who knows why they wanted him to leave? Perhaps the price of liberation and sin and death. It's striking to think that a whole city rejected the authority and compassion of the Lord Jesus. Not just one person or a few people, but an entire city. Begged him to leave. We pray this day that we might not be so hard-hearted when the Son of God comes to visit us. Hopefully we allow him into our lives into our families to visit us and bring us deliverance and restoration that only he can bring. Beg him today to stay. Beg him to stay with you as an individual. Beg him to stay with your families and renounce the lies of the accuser. Renounce those lies and announce that you belong to the Lord Jesus. Even as a family, your family prayer, announce that you belong to the King of glory, the one who has come to set the captives free, to cut chains. As we sung in the song response yesterday, if you hear his voice today, harden not your hearts.